cigarette in your mouth, it's gone out, Give and you're trying to guess. light it, dopamine. But when did I quit? About June time. Quit until... July? Oh, the ADHD medication shortage. The medication is, it is generally a stimulant-based medication. Noradrenaline. ADHD was... Everyone misconstrues it as... It would seem like I'm, I was absolutely fine. You're I just realised you look like Harry Potter. Yeah, no, do you know what? Somebody has... <laughs> I've been told that so many times. <laughs> And you're smoking, trying to light it. Yeah, do you know what? I I did a while back. I quit for... When did I quit? About June time. Quit until... July? Oh, no, mid-end of October, I think it was. Okay. And the ADHD medication shortage. So I couldn't get my meds at all. Obviously, a stimulant helped with that. Yeah, <laughs> so I decided, right, I started going... Absolutely nuts, because I, I think I had, when I found out I couldn't get any more, I think I had three. So I thought, right, I've got to try and ration this as much as I can. And because I, I thought I've got... A one would last. One's a day. Okay. One was a day. So <laughs> I had like three days and couldn't get any at all. So I thought, right, I'm going to go nuts here. Um, so I thought the only thing I could do, go back to smoking. Because it's how I kind of self-medicated for years. To kind of just take that tiny bit of an edge off. A stimulant. Yeah. Helps you. Yes, stimulants help, like caffeine. With your uh, yeah, hyper attention. Yeah, it does actually. Caffeine, um, any stimulant, because that's what the medication is. It is generally a stimulant based medication. I'm on a short release medication, which is uh, Amphexa, which is uh, dextroamphetamine. Okay. Um, the long release, uh, which is Elvans, which is and what, is what the, the shortages. Yeah, and what is the basis for a stimulant helping with a hyper attention? So Problem. it helps to promote. So with ADHD, I mean, even the name ADHD is a bit is incorrect, outdated. Norman, it's yeah. incorrect, really, because actually the medication helps release dopamine yes. and noradrenaline. Yeah. Or nor I can't remember the right way to say that. I'd have to look at it again. But there's two different chemicals it helps promote. Yeah. And both help promote focus and kind of your frontal cortex and executive function. Yeah, well, dopamine is a happy drug. Yeah, but with ADHD, sort of... it actually helps your executive function. Yeah. Because actually where your brain isn't able to regulate its dopamine. Yeah. But there's an interesting thing I've been... I, sorry to interrupt. I thought ADHD was... Everyone misconstrues it as not being able to pay attention. But in actuality, it's paying attention to multiple things at one time. It's not being able to focus on one thing. Yeah, it's not being able to focus on one thing. It's not that you can't pay attention. It's that you're trying, to, every... pay a... you're trying to pay attention to 12 different yeah, your things. your brain's doing a million things. And I think there are so many people who go, oh, well, I have... No, unless you have a proper clinical diagnosis, you don't have it yet. I mean, you, can, you, you can might be... have it. Yeah, you just haven't you been might clinically have it, diagnosed. You might, yeah, but it's where people, I think, have said, oh, but this is that, that's that. And there's a lot of information there, which was good. And actually, that helped me. A lot of the information that's out there mm. helped me realise it. But then I think if I said to you, I think it was quite obvious I had ADHD, wasn't it, Donald? It depends on if someone knows what ADHD is. Yeah, or it was always, how do I put it? So, But you say obvious, but I know a lot of people, well, I know some people that have ADHD that are absolute criminals, basically. Yeah. I mean, they're always fighting, they're always doing this, but you, and you've never been a fighter. No, player. I'd never been that, no. As far I as I was aware. just very... I mean, intense. Hyperactive and intense, yeah. That was, and you know what? That's what got to me is because it would impact both my friends, friendship relationships, my dating relationships, uh, focus at uni, just everything. And it would be, I would want to do something and I'd get started and I'd be like, oh, there's this, I've got to do that and I've got to do that and I've got to do that. Mm. And nothing would actually get done. And it would seem like I was absolutely fine. But you're right. I just realised you look like Harry Potter. Yeah, no, do you know what? Somebody has... <laughs> I've been told that so many times in my well, life. It's because you do look like Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, God. Do you know what? I actually... I remember seeing Did it. Did you saw it before? I just saw it now. I think it was on Newsround years ago, right? And they put out an advert for people to go and get cast to be Harry Potter. Mm. And I remember telling my mum I wanted to go and do it. And I think, I, I think she said to me at the time, oh, don't be stupid. That's a silly idea. And then somebody told me years later I looked like Harry Potter out of the books. And I literally sat there and went... Uh, 
probably should have done that all those years ago, shouldn't probably I? Probably should have done yeah. that thing. But then that would mean I'd be doing so Daniel Radcliffe's job. And did you meet the girlfriend because she's got a Hogwarts fetish? No. Oh, okay. Do you no. ever put dress up and wave your wand around? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> do you ever get undressed and wave your wand around? <laughs> Do I ever do a windmill? Yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. yeah. I got so, a... what is it about doing that though? Like when what? you're butt naked, you're just like. To be honest with you, I don't. <laughs> I've I've never never done it. I I can't. It's not really a sexy motion that I envisage to. I've just I th- I think it's just I'm like oh, I don't care. I'm butt naked. I'm just gonna walk around. I will walk around naked, but I just never. I've never personally. Honest to God, attempted to to windmill my penis hands free. Oh, I don't. I haven't done it hands free. I couldn't do it hands free. I don't think I could. What do you mean, like? Oh no, just dance around, kind of try oh, and flap. Yeah. I couldn't actually windmill it. Not properly windmill. I could kind no. of flap it. You give it a. I made a few breasts windmill in my time. <laughs> do you know what? I remember going out. I think it was you, me, so- and Charlie. We went to Source one night. Okay. I um, vaguely remember Charlie. Have you seen him recently? No. This um, conversation is probably a bit ADHD. Some people would think. It goes from one thing to another thing to another thing to another thing. I knew I'd struggled for years and years and years all my life. Yeah. I think the thing is, is I don't really know where to start with it. It was always harder. Everything was harder. Like everything was just, I don't know where to go with it really. Or how to describe it because it's not what specifically was harder i mean can you think of an example oh god um when you say everything was harder what do you mean was it work was it dating was oh, it's it everything eating? because the thing is was it studying just, i mean also the thing is part of it was i don't know whether to actually say this and put it on so hey whatever you say i can, you say it, a tiny I can bit. take it out i mean i'll so, edit loads out Tom, don't worry. one thing that i will say and i we can edit it out anyway. Like my IQ when I was a kid, Donald was like 165. Hmm. So I was, I'm smart, like very, very smart. Oh, because you seem dumb. Yeah. And the problem was is that I was when I try and talk to people yeah. who weren't or didn't even have a brain, I'd be yeah. like, what, 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 what are you on about? I don't understand. Why do you not understand this? And it took me getting my diagnosis, having my meds, and having a conversation with a psychiatrist. One, and he went, Tom, do you know what your IQ is? And I went, well, yeah, when I was a kid, it's about 165. I mean, I did a test a while back. It's like 158 now, so not majorly different, but still high enough. I was curious whether IQs can change or not to be a significant Yeah, they can. I, th- I used to <clears throat> think it was like the tests were configured so that they'd be able to tell what your IQ was regardless of your education level. I mean, obviously, you had to read and write, but... IQ is kind of cognitive reasoning, how quickly you can put patterns together, I can't remember thinking the, on your feet. Sure, I just can't remember the IQ test that I did when I was young. I mean, were there maths in there? In an IQ test, would there have been maths? Um, oh, God, was there math? I, I, my honestly... basic, I can't remember, but I'm, I just want to know. I can't, I want to... An IQ test, surely it cannot measure a person's ability to be intelligent because if you have to have some sort it's of education your, um well it's so realistically what you'll have you'll have there might be one say that's matching words right yeah and you've got to notice the similarities between the two words and it's yes. all based on the amount of time that it takes you to notice them sure then you've got a set of pictures and which one's the old one out or which one matches or put them in a pattern or put them in yeah and you have to look and work that out and work out which one's which yeah and it's about the speed you do that and how many you get right, which mm. is... But even that can on. be improved upon by practicing that particular skill. But yes, it can be improved on. Like, you can improve kind of about 10 points hmm, on sure. average. That's quite a lot. Most I mean, you people... can have an awareness of patterns. So you can... If someone says, put these... Find the patterns in these equations. You'd be like, you've never done it before. You'd be like, okay, blah, blah, find that, that, that. And then after you've done 10 years of finding patterns... Finding patterns becomes easier. Oh, it does. So generally, I think the idea is is that it can increase or decrease kind of 10 to 15 points either way, right? But it generally would never decrease that. It kind of swings. The last time I had an IQ test, I was young, like pre-teenager or whatever. I mean, and it was only like 130 or something, 135. I've never really encountered a problem... I couldn't understand. I mean, I've encountered some people, not you specifically, but some people that have said they've got IQs of 165 or so. And I just thought, when I've been interacted with them in life, I'm like, what a fucking moron. Yeah. 
So I don't really put too much. No, I think it's I IQ don't thing. because there are things as you're like you're so, like somebody might say something to me and I'm scratching there sitting what? And there are sometimes I I could seem what's the right word common sense I think would be the right common word. Common sense at times. is I think Yeah, I could sometimes lack a bit of that. But the reason that was for years is because my brain was always trying to do a million things. Yeah. So actually what now I can engage it and engage it with a bit more focus. Mm. My common sense is there. My executive functions there. Everything's just that a bit sharper, quicker. And yep. it's not where I might not have kind of grasped something before or been a bit kind of, what's the right word? Kind of lacking common sense in something. It's because my brain was doing this. An expelliarmus. Yeah. Just, just hit the mic. But it just, your brain's just running and on and on. And. Okay. So. <clears throat> I don't think I have any ADHD, but I've heard a lot of the symptoms or things that people with ADHD seem to say they suffer from. And I say to myself, I do that, but I don't have some of the other things that they would class as a problem. No, it's not so much of a problem. So what it is, I think, to put it into a box is too hard, I think, because... I mean, yes, there are things like you feel like you're one of the, I think one of the major questions, do you feel like you're driven by a mitre to constantly do something, constantly do something, constantly do something that can be really draining. And so it's the is that one of the questions that determines whether you've got ADHD or not? No. So to actually get diagnosed, you would first see um, a psychologist who would go through. So the NHS, private psych- no, okay, psychologist. Okay, no, sorry. Okay, let's them. refer is that question that you just said an example of one of the questions that might be used to determine? Yes. Right. So what is the question? Are you driven? Do you ever feel like you're driven by a motor? How so do you... constantly on the go. Okay. but So I would say I just am constantly going. I've said it multiple times recently. I wake up at 6.37 a.m. and I move until midnight and then I go to sleep. Yeah. And that that's just the way... That's the way you are. You've always been... Get on with it. Busy, 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 busy. But I don't struggle or find it a problem. No. And so... I don't find it a problem to go to sleep. I don't find it a problem. I will, part of that moving, or sorry, part of that always doing something is I might take 45 minutes to be with my cats. Yeah. Because my cats need some time with me. Yeah. My boy, he adores sitting on my lap. Like I can sit down and before my ass has hit the couch, he's on my lap. Like he's sitting down with me. And I know that he misses that when we don't do it all the time. Yeah. Which we can't at the moment because the dog, she has to be in the caravan. So he can't come out to the lap sitting area. So I will specifically make sure some evenings that I give him some time. And I will feel like I'm wasting my time to a degree. I feel like I should be doing something productive. That's it. That's part of it is you're sat down doing something, but you feel like you should be doing something else. Only because I'm down. only because I'm sat down doing something. No. So when you're, imagine you weren't able to be busy. Yeah. You couldn't suddenly be busy. How would you feel? If you couldn't do anything, you couldn't literally keep busy. This is the, there's a caveat to that. Would you be able to sit still if you couldn't do anything? What do you mean? If I couldn't do anything? If you couldn't do anything, couldn't get up, couldn't do everything, and you had to kind of sit still for a long period, would you be able to sit there all day at a chair? What's your definition of sitting still? Like sit at a chair without fidgeting, without kind of, you know how that kind of picture of it is. Like this. Yeah, just sit there all day. Calmly, without needing to get up and do something. I mean, and If it was a challenge, I could do it. Yes, if it's a challenge, <laughs> yes, you can. And that's where I would say... But who would want... Even people... That no, they, are, who would want to sit there and do nothing all day anyway? And it's not about sitting and doing nothing all day. And I think this is where people get confused with it. So I'm trying to... No, no, go on. I mean, no. I'm trying to go down a rabbit hole with this because I found it hard to sit and do certain tasks. Right? But who would want to sit down... And do nothing. Oh, you wouldn't. I hate it. I think. No, I mean, who would? Oh, other some people a, do though. Some people do though. Epitome of like wastes of life. Yeah, there are people who want to sit down and do nothing all day and, and vegetate. Yeah, and I think I I always liked for years. Like you know, when we would be at the festivals, I was I always used to be on my feet, didn't I? Yeah. I was never ever one to be like, oh, I need to sit down, I need to do this. All I would do is go and have a cigarette and go straight back in on my feet, on my feet, on my feet. And when I'm busy like that, I was always better. 
because I was busy, I had something for my mind to do. When you have to take that time to be like, right, I've got to sit down, but I should be doing something else. There's nine million other things. So the caveat that I put into this, the reason why I've just sounded like I have ADHD, but the way that I would then counter that is by saying, at the position I'm at the moment in my life, yep. I need to have certain things done because there are certain things like, we'll call them projects. You, you always get them done though, Donald. Uh, well, that's the point, is that there are certain projects that are ongoing at the moment that I, I do not- never get finished. That aren't finished. Mm. So for example, the previous recording I made for the last 10 days, 14 days, whatever, I've been trying to edit that into a video that I can put online, right? To keep the yeah. shows going. Because I have various technical uh, bottlenecks at the moment, Yep. one of which is- Almost no internet here, so it takes forever to actually do anything. And two is, for some reason, my editing software, and I've tried different softwares, they get, seem to get clogged up. And I don't know what it is. My computer's capable in terms of spec. Point is, when I get through the edit, it slows down responsiveness. Right. So it takes progressively longer to get through these clips when I've got yep. three hours of footage and I've got 25-minute episode and I'm trying to scroll through the other two and a half hours of it or whatever it yep. is, and I can't find the bit that I want to put in it, then it takes forever. Yep. Not to mention... I might just want to put in like a clip of a cowboy hat. Yeah. And if I can't find that cowboy hat straight away, I could spend the next 45 minutes looking for that cowboy hat online. Yeah, because you're like, well, I've got to find the cowboy hat because I need to find the cowboy hat. But the thing is, I will consciously be aware that I don't even need that bit in the episode for the progression of the episode. For some reason, I've just got sidetracked looking for this cowboy hat. Yeah, but that's where it is because I do it. I do, but I, I notice do it. it. Yeah, I, notice I do it. notice it. And I try and, and, I, I, and then I go, fuck it. To- but I've wasted 45 minutes. Yeah, you still, but that's the thing. I would, I would get completely sidetracked with something, mm. going in and then go, I don't actually fuck, what the fuck? But then other times, I can spend three or four hours doing a bit that may only be seven seconds long, because that's the nature of yeah. video editing. Three or four hours doing it, and I'll, that's great. No one's ever going to see it again. I mean, it's, it helps the story or whatever I'm doing, but at the bigger scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. That's part of the reason. But anyway, the point is, so my editing process takes a little bit of time at the moment for whatever reason. Until I finish making the video, I theoretically could always be going out and making that video. If I've got spare time, yeah. my brain's like, I should be out there doing that. Yeah, because it feels like... I'm wasting my... I'm, I'm not working. You're not being productive, and that's how I, I always feel. Now, I'm very lucky, and when I was on the long release... It was there for about 14 hours and I couldn't drink very well on it. It didn't agree with me if I drank. Mm. Like the next day, it wouldn't be, no, it was not a good idea. But the problem is, is I wanted the fact that it made my mind calm for a bit, that I'd actually be able to shut off and read a book yeah. and do something and sit there and not constantly. You what, just watch a film? Uh, yeah, watch a film now. I can actually see it, watch a film. I mean, did you have trouble watching films before? Yeah. So this is where if people think up until now I made it, I don't have any problems going to sleep. I used to read quite significantly. Yeah. You know, I watch films. I love watching a film. Yeah, if it's something right. I love watching, I would sit there and watch it. In fact, I love stand-up comedy. Yeah. And I will put stand-up comedy on to fall asleep to, usually ones I've already seen, because they're entertaining enough that I don't get annoyed, but, but they're calm enough that I can just listen to them and drift off away. They don't keep me engaged like a no, good thriller. No, something... Do you know why... Right, so I listen to brown noise before I go to bed. Or people pooing? No, brown noise. It's like noise in the background. Like white noise? No, slightly softer. But it's it's just there in the background that my brain can focus on that. Okay. That it's nothing really important, but then because it's focusing on that, it will drift off. So for me, stand-up comedy is brown noise. But at the same time, when I find myself in a situation where I can't have the TV on, I can still go to sleep. Yeah. So I don't have this inability to switch off. And I always sleep quite well. I don't really suffer from any stress. <laughs> so this is why I'm like, on some respects, I have many ADHD traits. traits. And on other aspects, I don't have any. Like I can focus on my... Like that editing, I can yeah. stand there and do that for 12 hours. To the point where I'm hungry, but I'm like, I'm just I'm just fasting for ten hours now. Yeah, I'll just get through the hunger and I'll, I'll eat dinner later. It's so what it is. It's one. It's the severity of the traits, hmm. and I think that the other theory that I have is a lot of people have said now that autism and ADHD are comorbid and they seem to be together. A lot of people who are, let's say, high functioning autistic, yep, also seem to have ADHD. Okay, now. I've known I've been autistic for years. I think I've said this to you. I a often long time joke ago. that I'm 
autistically candid in certain situations. Yeah, you can be. And I actually, a lot of people now... But that's always been because I find it funny. Yeah. Like, I can be incredibly tactful when I talk to people. Yeah. But I don't ever find myself in a situation where I want to be. I yeah. find myself being much more entertained by being incredibly blunt. Yeah, because it's funny. Yeah. And, and I don't really laugh, yeah. And I don't care what people no. really think about it. Like, literally, I, if I annoy you... I, but then on the other side of it, I don't like to upset people. Like if I yeah. can, I'll please people. But I also won't like the people that I love and the people that I surround with. I do absolutely anything for them, and I'll yeah. go beyond any call of duty to make sure that they're happy and looked after. But it doesn't feel like I'm doing anything for me. Yeah. Like I just do it. Yeah, you just do it. I actually have to pull myself up from doing stuff, but I'll see it. So yeah, because you're always. I think. Do you know what? I was reading a really interesting piece about it, and I think it was published by an NHS psychiatrist. And I don't really like the way the NHS are with ADHD autism. I don't think they're as up to date as the private sector is, purely because the private sector. We could go over and look at all the research going on in the US. Absolutely loads of it. Yeah. But the NHS are 10, 15 years behind. They are. They just are. Oh. And there's an issue with that. They need to get up to speed. A lot of the things that I watch about health and longevity and Medicaid is that there's so many things available, but even in America, the doctors there, they're still reactive medicine. And it's just, they've got this pain, they've got this problem, just make the pain go away and fuck off, rather than... Actually treat the... A lot of things can be cured with the correction in diet. Yeah, so I looked, one thing I do, I try to, so I take a multivitamin every day. Okay. But I would say you can eat properly to oh, negate no, I do the try need. To as well. You can negate the need for multivitamins. So when I eat well, yeah. I take my medication and I'm eating a balanced diet, I'm exercising, I drink yeah. enough water. That's well. one thing I like about actually having the short release medication that if I know now coffee and the medication can interact, right? Yeah. Coffee will speed up the breakdown of the medication. Yeah. Uh drinking orange juice could cause Red me Bull. to have um the caffeine can, but it's late enough of an evening that I'm I'm not going to take another pill today because okay. it'd be pointless. So lots of caffeine studies out there said so you shouldn't have caffeine after midday. <laughs> yeah, I know. You shouldn't have any caffeine. But the thing is, for me, that keeps my brain quite calm and focused. Yeah, but it actually what it will also do is affect your sleep. It does. So however, you don't sleep as well and your body doesn't flush out all the shit. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't heal and doesn't rest. So no. So endless I, downward cycle. I do try to mitigate the caffeine. I don't, to be fair, this is the first can I've had for about four days. I don't drink that many anymore. I tend to have coffee. I actually prefer it. But what I'll do is I'll know, okay, I've got my medication for four hours. I won't have my coffee during that period because it'll interact with it. I will have that coffee. at so, Say I've taken my tablet at eight. I will have a coffee at half 12. Okay. I will have that coffee when I know I've got downtime to enjoy it. Yeah. Because prior yeah. to having the medication, I would have been like, oh, I'll have my coffee, I'll drink it quick, do this, do this, do this, get on with this, get on with this. And I never would have had the downtime to be like, oh, Christ. Just... And then it hit me about an hour later. Oh, God, I've had the coffee. I haven't eaten. I haven't done this. Fuck. And you'd be running around thinking, shit, I've forgotten everything else I needed to do because I was absorbed with this. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, Christ, I've got distracted with that and I've forgotten about this thing. And it's just like, but now it's like, okay, no, I'm going to actually, I'm calm enough to go, right, I've done everything I needed to do or done those bits. I'm actually going to sit, even if my medication's worn off, I'll be like, no, I will factor in that time and make sure I have it. And I will force myself to have that period of time that I said I'm going to do. Like if I said I'm going to eat a meal, I will sit <clears throat> and eat that meal, Yep. finish all my drinks, put my plate away and then do whatever I need to do. Maybe 10 minutes later, I will let my food digest. I yep. will not sit and go, right, food, boom, 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 because I'm trying to do a million things. It kind of just slows it down enough that I'll go, actually, I'm going to eat my dinner. Then once I've eaten that, I'll have more energy to go do what I need to do. And then I will do it properly and finish said task mm. rather than half fishing in it, doing another task, going back to it and flip, 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 flip. It'll be, I'm going to start that and I'm going to finish. I'm going to have to sit down and family time, whatever that is. I'll just make sure everything's done before dinner. Yeah, because you know. if I haven't done it, if I... The trouble have... that I have is that she likes to go to bed at 10 o'clock. I could quite easily just stay out here till 1 o'clock, but because we sort of have to go to bed at the same time, I then have to go and have dinner and sort myself out and do the family thing in an evening. And that gets me because I'm like, I'm sitting down just watching I'm a Celebrity or some other garbage because it's family time. 
And I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Happy to make her happy. But I could also, I'm like, oh, I could be you saying could another, be doing... that's another two hours every night I could be editing, which yeah. is a day. We reduce time yeah. per day. Uh, that's how I used to. But the I problem mean... is, that's fine. Sorry. I would say that's fine because it would just start earlier. Okay. I get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock every morning just because yeah. now that's just my life. And I have a various morning routine with breakfast and morning coffee and got to take the dog out and yeah. got to give the cats some. And I've got So my morning doesn't really get out, even though I'm up for two or three hours at yeah. this point. I don't really get anywhere until 10, 11 o'clock now. Unless I'm at work. If I've got work to go to, I'm usually at work by 7 a.m. Yeah. But because I'm not working much at the moment, I just, no, 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 I come out and I've taken the dog for a walk and a piss and a shit and I've walked over it and she's set up. And then I come out here and I feel like, well, I've got to check on mom and I've got to look at this gate. I've got to, this thing's fallen off that. So I've got to fix that. I've got to go move this thing over here. I've got to pick up. By the time I actually get into the office and then, oh, now I'm in the office, like where I'm going to start doing some work for the show. Then I've got to check the post. Oh, there's a letter. This thing's arrived. Oh, this thing's turned up, so I've got to check that. And now that thing doesn't work. So now I've got to yeah. oh, now I've got to look up and talk to this complaints department why this thing doesn't work properly. And then so now we're up. Because everything and that's do you know what? Then we get to eleven o'clock and I haven't yeah. actually started looking and then I start looking at the show. And as I start looking at the show, then fuck it, I don't know. Everything else I don't, yeah. And I think one Suddenly thing, my ten hour day is now a four hour day. <laughs> what you were saying about getting everything done before bed, that's something prior to having the meds, I mm. could never put in good routines. I would really struggle. I could start them, but I would never be able to keep them long enough that then they would become yeah. a good routine. So what I found for me is one, I do like routine. Yeah. So when I go away to work, I have a much better eating training lifestyle. So I wake up, have breakfast, go to yeah. work, first breaks, ten thirty, have a snack. Second breaks, two thirty, have a snack, finish work at six, go to the gym, have yeah. dinner. And that's a good routine. And for like when I'm away in the summer for six, seven, eight months, my training's on point, my diet's massive yeah. and everything's good. I come home and I'm like, well, have breakfast. And I'm like, I plan to eat everything and do everything I need to do. Then I'm just doing stuff all day and then I come and have dinner. So now my diet is, although I eat healthily and I make sure I get my vitamins, I can't eat to grow. So I can't do any like building yeah and i can't and i can't really eat to to cut either i'm just sort of eating eating, eating a bit i'm hungry most of the daytime so i don't really and then because i'm not eating properly my brain's like well there's no not really much point in training properly so i'm not really doing any gym yeah, work Yeah, because it it's your brain going i mean i could but there's literally no point because i don't have that and without that i can't actually train I and can't reap the benefits from the training to the maximal effort. Yeah, so Not you're like, what's the point of doing it? Because it's yeah. only going to be half arsed. And I need to spend 12 hours of today doing this video. Yeah. When really, and I say to myself, if I just did half an hour of exercise at home, I'd be doing some exercise. Yeah. But I don't I spend 14 hours a day doing shit. And yeah. now, before I know it, I was, I had an eight months solid training consistency, yeah. which stopped in like September. Because... <laughs> Before I know it, I'll, I'll, I'll train tomorrow. I'll train. I'll, no, it's a week's gone by. Yeah, you put it off and that's so... I'm just doing other stuff. Yeah, you're busy because there's so much else going on. That's why I don't like phone calls unless it's about an emergency. Yeah. Because Matt, people ring me and, and what do you want? What's wrong? Well, nothing. Yeah, what's well, the input? Yeah. I've had to stop, pick up... Doing my, what I'm... Yeah. I've had to pick up Tom's phone and talk to you. But whilst I'm holding on a phone, I can't do what I'm doing because I've got to stand here and I've got to find signal so you can hear me. Yeah, you've got to do that when I'm in... The, and with a text I, message yeah it's simple you can reply back to it when you're free like yeah. when I'm busy doing something if somebody's trying to talk to me I'm like can you piss off I'm trying to do something like just leave me alone I'm busy oh, yeah. can you not see I? and then somebody will keep talking and I'm like fuck off fuck off I'm busy and then by the time you've gone and told them to fuck off you're like I broke my focus I broke. I put the thing down for long enough like I said that's the other side of it I, I can always get back to what I'm doing I don't have those problems what I just don't like is I'm doing something that I'm happy doing yeah and you know, you're enjoying it or I need to be doing or whatever I don't I just don't like going yeah yeah all right okay I just if it's an emergency fine if you need if you've broken someone's broken your heart fine I'll talk to you that's something I need to do right I need to look after people I need to sort out problems that's what my life is sorting out problems for other people not my own just other people's but otherwise, if it's just chit-chat, I'll text you. A little voice note, I can do that from going from here to there. I'll text you. Yeah. I'll reply. If I need to have a shit, I'll text you there. Do you know what? I remember when we were working up, I think it was Detling Hill, 
for the social. Hmm. And I was fast asleep in bed. I think you text me about three times. And then my phone rings. And I realised that you were calling me. And I didn't know what the time was. I thought, this has got to be important. Donald's calling me. And I think you were kind of like, hmm. where are you? Yeah, where are you? Yeah. And I was like, I'm in bed. And I think we had like, I think everybody needed to be there like half an hour ago. But the bar didn't open for like another hour and a half. Yeah. And I was like... Well, that's so you could get a two-hour induction out of the way. Yeah, but I'd already been there for that induction. I think actually at the point I turned up about half hour before the bar was meant to open because I'd gone and got a shower, oh. eaten, got ready, turned up. And I remember everybody moaning at me. Not you, not Lloyd, not Charlie, not Keith. No, no, really like that. Just all the other people being like, oh, you're late, you're late. You should have been here hours ago. And I was just like... And I think your response was, do you want breakfast? Well, well yeah, because at least you're there on time at that point. Yeah, I was on time. I'd I mean, not on time, but in time for the workload. Oh, yeah, I was all... But that's the point. So if I arranged for everyone to be there at 10 a.m. to start at 12 a.m., but they weren't, that was 10 a.m. for a two-hour induction. Yeah. Then if you're not there for 10 a.m., I'm like, well, what's wrong? So where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And if it gets to 11 and then 12, 11.30, you're half an hour, you're about to start the event that whole day. That's not even just yeah. a normal shift. That's like the one yeah. shift you get off that event. Where are you? What's wrong? Get here now. Yeah. Even if it's like a problem. Yeah, because I think we'd done we'd done the day before and I just remember waking up feeling I, I was knackered. I think we all were, to be fair. Because I think you'd gone home. I think I'd, I'd camped. I don't know what tired is, mate. Uh, I'd woken <laughs> up, got in, and I think nobody was actually really coming through the gates till... So I've been fidgeting hour. a lot. And I noticed you pulled up, can I sit still? I mean, I can sit still. The, the main reason that I fidget right now is because my back's... I've got a thoracic or a lumbar... Yeah, I remember you... ...pain. I've had it, for, I mean, forever. If I sit upright... I just get a burning sensation in my spine, so I'm like wriggling. Yeah. Because I don't want to sit back like this because I don't feel like this looks very professional for the show. So I want to sit like, I want to try and sit up for it. But am I, you know, I, I, think, need to, I need to like fucking click something out. Do you know what I think it was for me? It was more... Get the mic, microphone oh, on that. That was good. I think the fidgeting for me was more, it was just, I don't know. I just noticed it. I'd had symptoms all my life and just didn't know what it was. So... You, Aside from fidgeting, you know when you lift it, do this, bounce your feet. Yeah. Because of the nature of your soleus muscle, which is the one we use mostly for walking, the way yep. it's adapted over the lifetime. Basically, it's uh, it fires a high cellular burn off a very minimal stimulus. So, doing this, increase your calorie expenditure as a sitting down person. Christ. Just if you do this, or maybe it's like you have to do this for forty percent of your overall time sitting down. Like if you just bounce your feet occasionally whilst you're at work, like heel raises for those who can't see my feet. It can actually make a difference between people, like fat people, being fat and not being fat. Fidgeting. Neat. N-E-A-T. Yep. I never remember what it is. But basically, it's all the little movements you do. Yep. Non-exercise. Ac mm. Non-exercise. N-E-A-T. Non-exercise. Activity thermogenesis. Everything you do that is like a fidget. Yep. Or like a moving around that isn't on purpose. That is a... One of the four pillars of your cal calorie expenditure throughout the day. So the people that move more involuntarily, the people that sit there just bouncing their hands or doing this, they're burning calories that other people aren't burning. Yeah. So neat. You know what you were saying about things being a challenge earlier? That's something I think, I know there's quite a bit of research on it, but I've always found it better. If I've had a responsibility to do something and the onus is on me, mm. and it's not like, oh, I can kind of just be half assed with it, and there's actually a reason for me to do it, and reason for my brain to be like, actually, I need to actually do this. If I know that, I will actually go and do it and do it properly. Yeah. But if I know there's no actual reason, my brain will have already disengaged, yeah. which that's part of it where it's kind of like, right, w there's no actual reason for me to go and do it. It's completely pointless. Because my brain's already worked out that it's totally and utterly pointless. It's going... Yes, yeah, pointless. There's no point in me doing it. If it's a challenge, or best one is if everything, say everything's going to crap, right? Yeah. Everybody else looks like they're in panic mode. I'll be completely calm and focused. I think when it's quiet, I hate it because I'm bored. Because I, I used to thrive under absolute chaos and pressure. When it would be, let's go Oktoberfest, for example. Yeah. Absolute hell. Absolute hell for yeah. say. Trouble is, I, I'd see it's absolute hell and be working. I'd be putting out fires all over the place, but. I'd also be able to see that it was only like that because it was poorly planned. And I would, I would like it to not be. 
Yeah, it should never be. That was, I think that has to be the first, that was the first one we did that was really bad, wasn't it? I just can't really remember them, to be honest. I think it was the first one. One, one thing about my brain lately. How old are you? Uh, 31 now. Okay, well, I'm nearly 38. What I've noticed in the last probably seven years <laughs> is that I tend to not retain anything I don't see as being useful. Yeah, your so brain just forgets it. I have no issue remembering stuff I need to do, even if that's a million things. Whereas pre-30, I used to remember everything of every season I'd ever watched on Netflix. Like you could bring out season three yep. after season two was three years ago. I'd be like, that character, d- 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 d. now I can watch season three of something. And season two could have ended a week ago. And I was like, why is he there? I don't understand what's going on. I know that I've watched it. But I just said no. I like I've, my RAM is full. Do you know what? It's still there. It's more I have to go back and find it because hmm. there's more stuff there. In the five years, my brain's now got more things. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like yeah. my brain's now got more information. So to actually find the information that's from like, yeah, it does. I mean, it has to go through more to find that information. It's still there. We, we, I was thinking only because occasionally somebody will say something and I'll be like, oh yeah, but remember. But that bit of information isn't readily available to me on a daily basis. Like, I don't no, you just... have to go and find it. Well, no, you have to have a trigger, don't you? Something yeah, has something to... has to trigger it to come back. I mean, I might understand what these runes <coughs> mean in a different world. But in this current world, unless someone says to me or shows me this rune, I might never be able to. I might not be able to bring it out of my brain and just go, yeah. that's that rune for that. But if I looked at it, I'd go, that means cheese. Yeah, that, some... means, that one there means cheesecake, you know. But yeah. I wouldn't know that without looking. It's the same sort of thing. You have to have a trigger. You have to have, like, yeah, memory you trigger. do. It's, I describe it as I'm trying to think of something and I need someone to say a word or something related to it and my brain will find that piece of information. Mm. Slightly different. I find if you're, um, if someone's asking you, talking to you about a topic, then your topic will be at the forefront of your brain. You might be able to bring up all the information you know about yeah. it. But if someone's not talking to you about that topic... Oh, it's not there at all. When I was doing my teacher I don't even tra- know that I know it. Do you know, best way, yeah, when I was doing my teacher training, best way to say this, I might have just taught a year 11 chemistry lesson, right? Hmm. Had lunch, gone into another lesson, year 11 student asked me a question about the lesson. Oh God, that was two hours ago. I'm not going to, It's it's been used, it's no longer useful. Hmm. If it's something that I've, that's really quick off the cuff, like a simple question, yeah, if it's not, I'm like, I'm going to have to go look at actually what on earth we're on about because I've already forgotten that because my brain's moved on to what's more relevant now. It might not be, say, a couple of lessons. That might be yesterday's lesson they've asked a question on. And I'd be like, right, I'm going to have to go back and remember exactly what we were on about. I mean, nine times out of ten, if it's chemistry related, yes. If it was me teaching, say, for example, year tens and it's biology or physics, yeah, I'm going to have to go look, go back and look. I am not a physicist. I am not a biologist. I'm a chemist. So if one of your the little small people comes in and says... I'd really like to have a black sock, master. (laughs) And you say, I'm so sorry, Dobby. I only had white socks at the time. You'd be able to give them the the chemical (laughs) equation to change that from a Yeah, yeah, the chemical equation off the top of my head. Thing is, off the top of my head, there are, unless I'm doing it, like, if I've not used the information for ages, my brain will have to go back and get back into it. I've... I've got so much stored in there that if it doesn't know, like even when I, it sounds really stupid, I might go fishing, right? Uh, that doesn't sound stupid. I'm fully and aware that you go fishing. If I know, for example, right, I'm going, um, I'm going to go sea fishing after a specific, and I'm going to go, say I'm going to go after thornback rays or any form of ray. I'm thinking, right, I've got to think, what rigs have I got? I mean, I've done it so long that I already have them in my seat box. I know what I'm using. And it's just there. It's still there. As soon as I think about it, it comes back quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But it's like, let's go, for example, driving a car. If I haven't driven the car for a couple of days, it's still going to be stored in my brain how to do it. It's not going to forget that. But if it comes to, for example... Why is your clock not coming on? Oh. Oh, I turned it off. Oh. We'll use your watch then. It is quarter past eight. Okay, carry on. Um, where was I? Something about sea fishing. Oh yeah, so if I know I want to go do something, I've got to think, right, when I was getting back into sea fishing and learning it all, I would have to spend a lot of time thinking about how I tie the rigs. Okay. You were learning it? Yeah. So you would have And to. once I've, this is the thing, 
I've always had this. When I'm learning to do something, so when I was on my teacher training, I found it. So you're saying when you're learning to do something, you have to practice it and learn it. And once yeah. you've learned and it, once I've learned it, you don't. I don't, and I'm literally <laughs> boom. To, is that because you've I'm a perfectionist. It? I'm a perfectionist in the way I learn it. That it will take me, and I know it takes me longer to learn things. I know that with certain things, it might take me longer. Well, this but, is the thing I was trying to get back to when we spoke about IQ earlier. Is I find people can be clever and stupid, whatever. Maybe they have troubles doing stuff. Personally, if it's something that interests me. I'll learn it. Yeah, really like quickly. That. If it's boring and I'm having to, I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I can't. And I don't. I, I, don't, I know I have I to, to and I will sit there mm. and I'll be like, right, okay. I but have then you just said you're a perfectionist. Don't want to detract from that. Like when I'm making these videos, if something is, if I'm going through something, sometimes it takes me so long because I want to have a cut from one shot to another shot at the exact frame that that word has finished and it's starting on the next one. Yep. It doesn't matter. If the frame's on you for a second and I've started speaking, it doesn't really matter. No. But, but I need you to are have a that. Perfectionist. And I will even go like, because I'll have main frame, me shot, you shot. Now, if you take the main frame, yep. I can crop and zoom to a fourth, so another me shot. So like I've got basically five shots that are available to look differently. So when I do something like, oh, and I was telling a story and he said, da 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 da, and then went back to an I said, da 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 da. And I have this thing where I have a different shot. When he said, and then saying the words he said will be in a different shot. And then I'll go, and then I said will be in a different shot. And then the words that I said will be in a different shot. Yep. And it's just sort of, but it's very quick. It's within a few seconds. And it kind of looks a bit messy if you get it wrong, but I kind of have to do I could spend ages just trying to like zoom and cut and chase and move them around and chop them back in. Like this is keyboard and mouse hand, sorry. <laughs> Moving the frames back and forward until they get it just right. It really doesn't matter. And it's only about four seconds of the show. Yeah. But it could take me half an hour. But you want it to be perfect. Like, when yeah. I would be... And no one's going to see it. I'm like, no one's going to watch it. I'm like, this could be 10 minutes into the episode and no one's ever made it past 67 seconds yeah. of my show. So what's the point? It's like one anyway. thing I had to get out of the habit of when I was planning my lessons is I could spend hours making everything perfect because I would want it to be perfect. And then... The kids aren't going to pay attention anyway. No, do you know what? Hmm. The year eight class I had... My last placement, I absolutely loved. They were my favourite class. And the teacher who they'd had, uh, they'd gone back to America. Shouldn't be showing favouritism, pretty sure. No, but I'd started teaching them and I took them on pretty much where there was a cover teacher in the class with me, but I was the teacher. Yeah. So I took more of the onus on actually, I guess it was more, well, they're looking to me, nobody else to teach them. I've got to make sure I get it across the best way possible. And I would plan the lessons the best I could. And then I thought, actually, not everything I need to do has to be perfect. It just has to work. The average, where we're on about IQ, the average IQ in the US, I think, is 98. 98. There's a 95 to promote you as a chimp. Normally, 90% is you teach I get, no, so 90%. I get... I get that, but when it says, what's the 100%? So say that? you've got 50 lessons over a fortnight. Yeah. Right, you've got five lessons a day, so 25 in a week. Yeah. Or 50 in a fortnight, which is how it usually works. That's weird, how you work like it eight out. eight lessons a day when I was at school. So you've got, your, well, you'd have five. <laughs> I'd go from, uh, my oh, you might, yeah. My school was eight till five. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> say we've got eight. I don't know what this schooling is with people yeah. going at 10 and leave at three. But when you've got the bit there and you've got 50 lessons, right? Yeah. You're teaching, so 10% of that. Five lessons. So you're teaching 45 okay, lessons. So, so you've got when you five say, hours. I know. Five hours yeah. free over a fortnight to do your marking, planning, everything else. 